are delighted to welcome you today to our CBS Family Service. If you are watching us on Hope TV or listening on Hope FM, or those of you joining us live on our Sitem Church online social media platforms for the very first time, we extend a very warm welcome to you. Thank you for joining us as we take time to worship and hear from God. It's our pleasure to provide this very special online worship experience today. Please share your comments throughout the service and please share the link with others after the service for their benefit as well. Thank you for staying connected to the Sitem Broadcast Service. God bless you and please enjoy the rest of the service. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are going to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you so very much for joining us in today's CBS Family Service. Always a joy to have you join us for a time of praise and worship. And today, it is a very special day. It is the Father's Day, and it is a special day to all the fathers out there. We celebrate you, and our prayer to you is that may God continue to keep you. May he continue to do great and mighty things in you and also through you. Thank you for joining us. My name is George Kishoro, and uh, this morning uh, we have this amazing, amazing team. It is uh, the Men's Choral, and they are here to lead us in a time of praise and worship. Help me in welcoming the Men's Choral. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you and we bless your name. We thank you for your great name and your greatness in our lives, oh God. This day we want to magnify you. Wherever you are, just join us as we sing together to declare that the far we have come, he has been Ebenezer. Father, we bless your name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Toka <laughs> Nifike mahali ni mefika Mana wewe ni ebeneza Maisha ni mwangu Nataka ebeneza Mijengwe juu yako Ninataka ebeneza Uwe msingi wangu Shiwela Shiwela Na kutamani Shiwela Oh, 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 oh,
yetu Hey, sema ni nataka sure he has done great things and he is a bendeza so if you believe that with us wherever you are i just want you to stand up on your feet dance to the lord dance to the lord he is worthy of all the praise he is worthy of all the honors hakuna mwingine kama yeye hakuna mwingine oh sema ni nataka nataka Kutamani sana Jiwe langu La thamani Na kuitaji sana Hallelujah Thank you Jesus For there is none like you Be thou exalted Be thou lifted on high Hallelujah Amen I know you have been blessed by the ministry in worship from this amazing team, the Men's Chorale, joining us this morning in a time of praise and worship. Stay with us because there is more worship coming up after this sermon. Well, it's now time to hear the word. And our speaker today is none other than Elder John Nganga. And his title for today's message is Fatherhood. And as you watch and listen, feel free to comment or even share a question. Remember, our hashtag today is Fatherhood. Now, let's welcome Elder John Nganga to bring us today's message. How are all of you? Today, we are discussing a very, very important topic, fatherhood. But I'm sure in your mind you start saying, why important? For example, if you are a woman, you might switch me off, wondering that's not my topic. Or maybe if you are a young man and you're asking yourself, what has that got to do with me? I want to tell you why it is important. Because in God's design, he designed that, um, that the men who give birth to children are going to be held responsible, the men will be held responsible for what happened to that family. When Abraham was called, and also it's repeated to Isaac and Jacob, they were called because God knew they would bring their family in the fear of the Lord. 
And that's not said of women, although women also will participate. It's said of men. That the future of mankind is tied up with what happens to the, to the man in the, in the community. So you can therefore see that even if you're a woman and you're a part of the community, it should interest you what happens to the men as fathers because it's going to affect the kind of world you are likely to discover yourself in. If you're a young person, even more importantly, because these old guys are, will be dying soon and gone, but what they will leave you is a world in confusion because fatherhood was not done the way it should have been done. Because God is saying it's the responsibility of the father to bring up his children such that they will be responsible members of society. So who we become is very, very important. You know, one of the things that is becoming rare these days is really knowing the role of man. My wife, who is a university lecturer, tells me the story of asking her university students to just tell her what the role of a mother, what the role of a father. So she started with the, with the father and she divided the blackboard into two. One side is a side for, for fathers. So the first part is the whole class was participating. What the role of a father? Somebody, somebody said, yeah, protector of the home. She was about to write. Another boy said, no, 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 no. We can't write that. That's no longer true. Fathers are security risk because they, get, they go at night and when they are coming home at night and you are asleep, you have no idea whether it's a thief or your father. They are carrying a security risk. If it, if it was not my, my father, I would not feel as afraid at night like I do. So it was debated until it was dropped. You cannot talk of the average father being uh, in charge of security. Then another one said, fathers are providers. They are the ones who make sure we go to school. They pay our school fees. And my wife was just about to write when other groups said, no, 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 no. I will not be in this university if it were not for my mother. My father just drinks the money. Sometimes he drinks all his and even takes what belongs to my mother and I end up in trouble without school fees. My friend, how could you in any way call men providers when they actually don't actually provide? And then somebody said, fathers, you know, they are important. Fathers are the ones who lead homes. See, and, and he was about to write until somebody said, no, 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 no. How could you be called him a leader? And many times he is at home, he has no idea where left or right is. He is drunk. There's nothing he can, you can say about his uh, leading anybody. And I think it's an important thing to understand that debate went on and it was adding up with a conclusion. They can't quite tell what a current, they are fathers. Remember, these are university students. So they have fathers. Where are the fathers? Which role do they play? So she finally said, okay, let's forget about this. Let's look at the mother's side. And they started, mothers are the comforters. There was no debate, so she wrote it down. Mothers are the providers. No debate, so she wrote it down. Mothers are the ones you run to when in pain. Now, within no time, the blackboard was full. She says, but you know, we still have written nothing on the other side. So you went back there. And because they were not getting anything agreed, she finally asked the boys, since one of these days you, will be, you are going to become a father, what kind of a man are you going to be? That's when the boys realize they're actually talking about themselves. And they're actually saying they have no role in life. You know, somebody suggested, maybe we still have a role. After all, you actually must uh, be needed before a child is born. Is not that all? Somebody say, no, 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 even that role has been taken. Haven't you read in the newspaper about one of the, one of the hospitals in Nairobi where they have a spam bank, where when a woman wants to have a child, they just go and sign papers and pay some money and they'll be pregnant with a baby and they have no idea who the man is. He's more, more of a bull than a, a father. And so it was realized we have a crisis. 
So can you see then how important this topic is? Because fathers are there. There's no way you can get a baby without a father. So there's no debate about the issue. There was a, there was a sperm that finally formed the baby. But what do they do after that? No, fathering is not sarring a baby. Fathering is what you do after the baby is born. And many of us haven't played any role or are not intending to play any role. So you have fathers, and I'll give you four categories of fathers. Fathers who are booze, simply, they impregnate girls and take no responsibility. When the boy, girl says, but you know I'm pregnant, that's none of my business. Why didn't you use the gadgets for, for family planning? How did you end up pregnant? Are you a foolish girl? She's quarreled, and the, 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 the final sign she hears, she was more of a bull than a man. That's what the culture of, but he is still a father, because the DNA can prove that he is the father of that baby. The second category of parents, are, of fathers, are fathers who actually acknowledge the baby, but they, generally speaking, do not provide in any way for that baby. They still want to be called the father, but they do not, either because they don't work or they waste their money, the mother has to foot all the bills. So they are fathers, yes. They have acknowledged the fatherhood and the baby, but they are not investing any resources to the, to the baby. The third category of fathers are fathers who actually provide for the baby, they pay the maternity fees, they, they, they pay the school fees, they actually invest in the, in the child. But unfortunately, they are not available to the baby. The baby grows fatherless. Those are the people sometimes we call single mothers, but the father has a, play, a place to, uh, some role he is playing, he is contributing the money. But as the father's child is, grow, is concerned, he has been brought up by a single mother. That kind of a father may be proud about the amount of money he actually used, but he actually never fathered. Because giving money is not fathering. The child is not even aware where the money comes from. So the last part of the, of the type of a father is a father who literally takes it as a responsibility to bring up the baby. And whether the mother contributes or does not contribute, he is fully, he feels fully responsible for the future of that baby until the baby is old enough to run their own life without necessarily any help from the parents. So what I want to ask you is, in which category of a father are you? Let me turn out a question, because many of the people listening to me are not necessarily, are not necessarily fathers. Are you a son or a daughter? Who is your father or your mother? You see, the word father means the source. You came from somewhere. And it's important to identify wherever you came from as a, as a, as a, as a son or as a daughter is your source. You didn't just happen to be there. And your mother is not adequate to produce a baby without a father. And then the word of God is saying in, Deuter in Exodus chapter 20, honor your father and your mother. Honor. And it's not a request. It's not a suggestion. It's a command. And it means whether you're a daughter or a son, it's your responsibility to show honor and respect to your parents, to your father, to your mother. So any child, son or daughter, who plays no role, that shows he has respect for parents, is breaking God's command. That's why you need to follow your mother for your mother to tell you who your biological father actually is. And even if he, is, he has played no role in your life, you still must show him respect. The commandment is honor your father and your mother. And you do not honor them because they did anything. It's because they are you are source. They are your source. And I think that's very important for us to understand whether you're a daughter or a son, whether you are young or old, it will be important that you understand. You are because 
your father is. You will not be there if your father did not pre-exist you. You see, your father is a conveyor of God's fatherhood to you and all families. And I think it's important to understand that. And uh, we will be coming to that in a minute. Now, your father is, and whether you like it or not, or not, maybe the size of your nose was determined by the genes of your father. Who you are, whether you like him or you don't like him, and you cannot undo it, because that's God's order of things, you will look, you, will, you are certainly going to look like him in one way or the other. Because, like I'm saying, he is your source. Why do we need him? Why do we need a father? Whether he plays that role or not, what's the intention of God in giving us parents, fathers and mothers? Number one, according to Luke chapter 2, verse 52, talking about the baby Jesus, he needed a father, not a real father, but a foster father, because his father was God. But he needed Mary's husband to play the role of a father. What kind of role? Luke chapter 2, verse 52 says, the baby grew in stature. It's the responsibility of a, of a father to ensure the baby grows biologically, physically healthy. It's your responsibility to ensure your child eats a balanced diet. It's your responsibility to ensure the child does exercise. It's your responsibility to ensure that the baby has a medical cover that allows him to be treated when he is sick or even to be examined and vaccinated, so he should be. So if you feel your baby, because the baby can't complain, if you feel your baby in helping him to be grossed in stature, you have an answer to give to God. He gave you a responsibility, and most likely you prayed, God, give me a child. He answered and gave you a child. And you are not playing the role of helping the baby to grow in stature. It's your responsibility. And there's nothing the baby can do. You know, the interesting thing is, a baby of a donkey, as soon as it's born, it actually rises up, it can walk to look for the mother. The baby of a, of a, of a human being, wherever the baby is born, it can't even move its head. Are you aware babies cannot lift their heads? A baby of a human being is totally dependent on external help. And that's the way God created us, in order to ensure you, the parents must play a role for you to survive where you are. That's why you have to give honor to your, to your parents. He has given them a role. Number two, Luke chapter 2, verse 52 is saying, and the baby grew in wisdom, intellectual development. In other words, Joseph and Mary had to ensure the baby intellectually uh, developed. That's why we know baby Jesus started reading the scrolls at a very early stage. In fact, by the age 12, he surprised the experts because in his own family, the parents took responsibility in helping him to have intellectual development. And you as a father on a father's day should be reminded that it's your responsibility to ensure your children have intellectual development. They're able to read and write. They have access to things that can help him to understand the world and to know, know things that will help them to be able to navigate in the world. Thirdly, we learn the baby grew in favor with man, what I call social development. It's the responsibility of a parent to teach interpersonal skills on a child. That's how a child learns. When somebody confronts you, how do you react? When your baby is a, is a bully in school, it's a failure not of the baby, but of the parents. They never gave him interpersonal skills to know that being bully is not being socially developed. It's a social handicap. And it's important to, for you as a parent to teach a child very early of several interpersonal skills. For example, learning to respect other people's property. You cannot just pick your sister's shoes, wear them because they can fit you, and your sister comes to discover they have no shoe to go to, go to school with. You must respect 
other people's property, that means you'd have to ask your sister, do I have your permission to use your shoes? So all that has to be taught at home. That's what, and in the process, when you learn how to respect other people's property, they, you have favor with them, social development. And then Luke chapter two, verse 52 says, they grew in favor with God. That's what we are calling spiritual development. That means it's the responsibility of the parent to ensure at a very early age, the child learns to deal with God, to understand that they must grow in favor with God means they learn to talk to him. I was very happy when one of my grandchildren, uh, we talked on Sunday, and he said, Guka, I gave my life to the Lord, and he's only the age of four. And I told him that is very exciting. And I realized that, that the, the parents must have done a good job. In a, I've also talked to him about, about God, but if the parent must have had a good goal, to bring him to the level he realizes the importance of getting to know God and getting to have him as his Lord and Savior. It's important at a very early stage to realize it's your responsibility, not for Sunday school teachers, but for parents, for a father especially, to help your child to understand why he needs God and who God is in his life, uh, who sees a God who sees in secret. Let's just look at um, Ephesians chapter 3, just talking about fatherhood. Verse 14 says, For this reason I knew before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. What are we learning? Every family that's called a family is only a family because God created a family. In other words, every father draws his fatherhood from the fatherhood of God. And that's a very frightening statement, fathers. It means, as a father, you are God's representative on earth to that child. In other words, God, because the small child cannot understand the things of God that early, at a very early stage, the kind of father you are helps the baby to understand who, who God is. Do you realize in the Lord's Prayer we say, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Just note, our Father who art in heaven. What, are, what, is, the, what, are we, what is God saying? That you are the Father on earth, he is the Father in heaven. So a child has a right to start imagining that the earthly Father is representing God, or another way of putting it, to understand that whatever the, the father does, even God does. And you can see what a bad representation many of us are about that role. The role of representing God to your children so that they can actually pray clearly, our father who art in heaven. And that's one of the things why men must play a role in their children's life. Can you imagine if a child is, um, is from a single mother and they have to say the same Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, and they have no father in their home. How do they, since the Lord's Prayer assumes you have another father and that therefore you can picture how the godly father looks like. Can you see the confusion you cause on a child without a father? That's why I keep telling Single mothers, it is your responsibility to let the child know he has a father, although their father has absconded his duties. He needs to be clear that for him to understand the meaning of the Lord's Prayer, that there is a father in heaven and there is a father on earth. But let me repeat what I've just said. Fathers are supposed to be God in human form. In other words, when children look at you, they see, the, they see God. That's the meaning, our Father who art in heaven. And my prayer and hope is that you are going to play that role. As I go towards finishing, I want to summarize by giving, telling you that the Father is a leader of the Human Development Center. What's your role? In summary, 
a leader of the Human Development Center. What are homes? Human Development Center. All the confusion we see in industry, all the confusion we see in church, all the confusion we see in society can be traced back to parenting. In fact, studies have been done about people in prisons, and it's been clearly shown that 60-70% of all people in prison came from malfunctioning families. That means if you, if you want to empty your prisons, just correct the homes, because homes are human development centers. And uh, I, 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 would, I would like to, to mention that I will not be able to cover all this, but I've covered this in my new book on leaders or parents as leaders. Parents as leaders is my new book. And I, in it, I say, you have to think of yourself as the leader of the human development center. Number one, this human development center um, is, is, is a place where the child can grow in the four ways that we talked about. We have just talked about Luke chapter 2, verse 52. Number two, we have, I want to suggest to you, you for, a, for it to be the Human Development Center the way it should be, it must be an unconditional love center. The place where a child knows they are not loved because they are beautiful. They are not loved because they are handsome. They are not loved because they are doing a well academically. They are simply loved because they are children. Your son is your son, whether he is number one in class or number last in class. And he must never sense that the father does not love him because of his grade in school. Teachers can look at it that way. But you are not a teacher, you are a father. And as a father, the child must sense you may be unhappy with his academic performance, but him as a person, you actually love him because the love you have, and according to God's intention, the love you be having for your children should be unconditional. No child needs to earn love from a father. They need to be loved unconditionally. Thirdly, I think you need to see your home as a worldview foundation center. That means it's the responsibility to give the child the glasses through which they are going to interpret life. And that's a very, very important thing to, to understand. Worldview are the glasses through which you interpret life. And my, my question is, can that be said of your home? And then finally, as a home, you need to be the retreat center where people, after all the fighting with, with all kinds of challenges outside there, especially among in teenage, they know a place where they cannot be accepted and where they can be received and where they can retreat. As we finish, many of us have problems measuring to that standard. But Jesus Christ died on the cross for our forgiveness. But that forgiveness is only possible if, and only if, you are going to repent. So measure yourself against that standard. And if you, you are not meeting it, go to God in prayer. And I now want to pray for you. Lord Jesus, we all don't measure up to the standard you have set in the scriptures for fathers. And I'm praying for any father that admits his area of failure, that number one, you'll forgive them. Because that's why you died on the cross for our forgiveness. But number two, you give him your love, your power, your spirit to be able to behave different from now onwards and so to become the father that you meant him to be and the, his home to become the kind of home that you meant a Christian home to be. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Help me now in welcoming our amazing worship team. It is the men's chorale once again as we give God thanks for ministering to us in the service today. So we want to declare, Kijito cha utakasu ni damu ya Yesu. Amen. 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 
Kichitocha utakazo ni damu ya Yesu Bwana na uwezo kunipa wokovu Kichito Kichitocha
Jehovah we glorify your name. Jehovah we magnify your name. Seize it to me, part out a castle. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The word of the Lord says, For God so loved the world. That he gave his only son yes, to die that we may be called his sons. Hallelujah. That we may be his own. And Jehovah, we thank you. We thank you for the blood. Hallelujah. We thank you for the blood. Yes, because of the blood we are free. Hallelujah. Because of the blood we have access to you. Yes. And we glorify your name, O oh Jehovah. We magnify your name, O oh Jehovah. Hallelujah. Hey. Oh Jesus, we thank you for your love. Yeah. We thank you for your love. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us that we should be called the sons of God. Sons of God, behold, behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us. Oh, behold what manner.
As a response on what you did, we love you, oh God. And sometimes we may fail. Sometimes it might not even be enough. But we pray that God, you will give us the grace to love you, to love you, to love you, to love you the more, to love you the more in everything that we do. May we love you the more, oh God. Oh Lord, help us. Help us, oh Lord. That we will follow what you declare for us. That we will follow what you say for us. Because you have, you have the best of thoughts for us. And we declare, oh God, that without you we are nothing. Be with us. Walk with us. We love you, oh Lord. We give you all the praise and all the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We thank you, Lord, because of the giving of your people. Thank you because of them that have mighty Father decided to stand mighty Father with your work. We pray that you will bless them, mighty Father. We pray for their blessings, mighty Father, even for them that were not able to give today. We pray that, God, there will be an abundance in your house. There will be an, an overflow, mighty Father. Lord God, remember their businesses, remember their careers. Lord God, anything and everything that they do, we pray that, God, you will bless the works of their hands. Lord God, even for them that are trusting in you, mighty King, Lord God, for provision, may you remember them and may you come and, mighty Father, give them in Jesus' name. We pray, mighty Father, even for them that will be minister, uh, administering, mighty Father, uh, uh, these finances. We pray that, God, they will do so. Lord God, within the confines, mighty Father, that you will lead them. We pray against, mighty Father, anything that is not of you, even in as far as the using of these finances are concerned. We thank you and we bless your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you, and now we can go ahead and give our tithes and our offerings and our gifts. And for that, let's watch this clip. It is now time to express our worship to God through giving. Thank you for your continued support of God's work here at SIDM. We believe that God, who sees in secret, will reward you openly and abundantly. We have a common payment platform for all our giving, irrespective of which assembly you happen to attend and even for our visitors. You can give via mobile money through the platforms M-Pesa or Airtel Money. The pay bill number for either system is 933934. For the account name, please indicate the SITM assembly you attend. If you have joined us in this service but you are not a member of any SITM assembly, just write offering in the account space. Please remember that all other SITM PayPal numbers remain operational. If you would like to make direct bank deposits, electronic transfers or PESA link, please use the following account. Account name, Christ is the Answer Ministries, Cooperative Bank, University Way Branch and the account number is 011. 2806176390 the swift code kc o k e n a if you prefer to give through our website kindly visit www.sitem.org click on the give tab and follow the instruction for online giving once again we want to appreciate every one of you for every gift every tithe every offering and every generous material support god bless you
Thank you very much for joining us on CBS Family Service today. Remember, join us on Tuesday at 6 p.m. Please take note of the new time. It is 6 p.m. for the After Sunday Live with today's speaker, Elder John Nganga, as he answers your questions on the subject of today's message. On Wednesday at 6 p.m., we will have a live prayer service when you can send us your prayer requests. And also, our pastors will bring them before the Lord Jesus Christ in prayer. Please keep tweeting, keep posting, share the link for today's message. And remember to use the hashtag fatherhood. Please remember to use the annual Bible study guide this week for further study on our theme. If you have made a decision to follow Jesus Christ as your savior today, please let us know by contacting the following WhatsApp number 0728-221-221 on your screen. We will be sure to follow up with you this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. I have been your moderator. My name is George Kishoro.